All right, so we got every single Warhammer Space Marine Legion explained. We all know who the best of the best of the best is. The Salamanders. Um, so what I think I did learn is I think Legions is like another name for like faction, right? Or am I completely wrong? Let's go to the video. One day a god decides it's time to bring humanity back into the stars and creates giant superhuman soldiers in a basement on Terra that would be known as Space Marines. Yes, sir. The 20 legions of these super soldiers will struggle with their identity, their purpose, their there, faith, I and saw ultimately it. each other. And each of these legions is unique in ways you wouldn't believe. So welcome to our breakdown of the 20 legions of the Adeptus Astartes right. from Warhammer 40. Breaking down all of them. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. We might as well start at number one. The first legion Astartes is also coincidentally one of the most celebrated despite their habit of secrecy. Often tasked with some of the most important and high profile missions, the Dark Angels enjoyed much of the spotlight during the Great Crusade. Their first recorded deployment was the defense of the Imperial Palace during the Palace Coup attempt during the Unification Wars. Many of the first legionnaires of what would eventually become the Dark Angels were used to experiment fighting styles and organizational techniques to be used in the other legions. Oh, snap. This led to an air of superiority that hung over the first in every encounter with their fellow legions, leading to the unofficial nickname, the Uncrowned Princes. Many First Legion warriors started taking names of epic heroes from Terran myth as they slowly started believing their own hype. However, this led them to start believing that there was nothing they could learn from the rest of the Imperium or even their brother Damn, Space they got cocky and so, with it. by the time their Primarch Lionel Johnson was found, the First was a legion of secretive and superior traditionalists ruled by a circle of pseudo-nobility called Hosts. Oddly, the prideful leaders of the Legion did not at first enjoy the presence of their Primarch like other Legions did, and it took quite a few duels for the Lion to beat some sense into this group of Astartes. And okay. unfortunately, this feeling of bitterness and wounded pride became a festering undercurrent of heresy that came to a head when Horus attacked the Imperium. The Legionnaires that had still shown- Man, I heard a lot about that Horus dude, bro. Yeah, and I think he was in that one trailer, that one uh, Warhammer trailer, uh, yeah, bro, that Horus dude, bro, is a straight up diabolical school threat, bro. He's a menace, bro. Resistance to the lion and his new tactics my had been sent to guard their home world of Caliban and were very upset about the perceived slight against their honor. Final act of rebellion, these Marines would become the Fallen, turned against the Imperium, forcing the lion to destroy most of Caliban and fighting his former best friend, Luther. Heavily wounded, the Primarch slept for over 10 millennia until waking up during the Indomitus Crusade. Man, he slept for 10 millennia. Man, I know he had the best rest of all time. Listen, you know your sleep's good when you wake up and you slobbering on a pillow. Man, that's some good sleep right there. Currently, the Dark Angels are one of the strongest Space Marine chapters, working in concert with their successor chapters better than any other Legion. He's lying. Obviously, Salamanders are number one. I mean, I don't <laughs> see. I don't like this disrespect. We all know Salamanders are legit number one. I mean, I just, you know, what is he talking about better than everybody? What? Like, <laughs> all while hunting down what is he remains cuckoo for cuckoo of their puffs? fallen brothers in secret. That's weird. All it says here is error 404 legion not found. Hmm. Well, on to the next one, I guess. Wait, what? A legion diminished by the near total loss of its gene seed. The Emperor's children were a faint echo of the other legions by the time Fulgrim was found and given command. Driven by his personal need to prove himself as the perfect son of the Emperor and his compulsive need for efficiency, Fulgrim drove his legion to never waste resources or energy, creating some of the most obsessed marines in the Imperium. For some time after Fulgrim took command, the Third Legion wasn't able to take part in many of the more glorious and notable campaigns of the Great Crusade as they worked to replenish their numbers. Okay. Once they were ready, however, they proved overeager and ended up volunteering for challenges that would stress even the more better equipped legions. Yeah, they just want the this fight. exposed them to the taint of chaos early on, and by the time the heresy was being planned, the Emperor's children and their Primarch had almost been fully taken by the ruinous powers. The Emperor's children and their Primarch were manipulated at almost every step of the way. Horus saw his inexperienced and eager Dumb young dumps. brother as a useful tool, even leveraging his relationship with Ferris Manus of the Iron Hands Legion in an attempt to get yet another Legion on his side. Oh, snap. For his part, 
Fulgrim is depicted as being mostly naive, but we shouldn't forget that he is a Primarch, a superhuman warrior with a huge wrinkly brain and tons of ambition, and his legion was very much the same, a fact that the Prince of Excess exploited with gusto. Masters okay. of siege warfare, these implacable warriors were often more stubborn than the fortresses they garrisoned. Making matters worse, their Primarch Perturabo was a strict disciplinarian, instituting decimation as a punishment whenever the Legion failed to measure up to his high standards, which thankfully wasn't often. Choosing one out of every ten of your friends to be beaten to death is a strong motivator to not make mistakes, it seems. But like, bro, that's like horrible team chemistry, bro. That's like, that's like a negative D minus team chemistry right there. Like, listen, I understand, like, you know, you want to make your whole team better. Like, you know, the whole, like, no mistakes type of thing. But like, bro, like, dang, like, you really got to beat, bro. You got to beat one. It's not funny because, like, you know, obviously, bro, like, rest in peace to that guy. He's, he's definitely not living. The guy that who got, who got, who got the beats by everybody, bro. Listen, I feel bad for him, but I mean, like, I sort of get it. Like, you know, you want the people to be, like, the best or whatever, bro, but the team chemistry is definitely off. The real problem for the Iron Warriors was that they were too good at what they did. Long, protracted sieges and trench warfare are difficult for any soldier, and though Space Marines are superhuman in many ways, they're built for quick, decisive strikes, not drawn-out warfare. Oh. The Iron Warriors, though, took these assignments on without complaining so often that they got themselves pigeonholed into the role. Wow. Whenever a tough enemy had dug in, the Emperor sent the Iron Warriors to blast them out. Whenever a fortress needed guarding by more than just human infantry, he called on the Iron Warriors. Okay. This slowly bred resentment and bitterness in the Legion, and especially its Primarch, who began to get envious of the praise and honors heaped on his more noteworthy brothers. When the time came and Horus approached him about the possibility of fighting the Emperor and his upstart loyalist brothers, Perturabo and his legion didn't hesitate to say yes, although they remain to this day one of only two traitor legions who staunchly refused to worship the gods of chaos. Oh, the he fifth legion jealous. is one of the very few examples of Astartes forces. I know them. These are the guys that like go, uh, they rely on speed and stuff like that, right? I know them. Who operated relatively the same before and after the introduction of their Primarch. Originally called the Star Hunters, these Astartes were not often found in the grand battles of the Unification Wars or the Great Crusade, being instead held back for use as scouts and hunters, tracking down enemies of the Emperor for other legions to destroy. Oh, snap. Not that the 5th Legion was incapable of fighting campaigns on their own, as their war record during the Great Crusade would attest, but their hit-and-run tactics were better suited for smaller-scale fights, and while effective, the other legions thought very little of their brothers from the 5th. Wow. And while this image of the Star Hunters didn't change much after their Primarch Jagatai was found, the newly renamed White Scars began to pick up more culture and pride than they had ever in. I'm gonna be honest with you. Obviously, like, you know, Salamans is like the best, you know, faction slash legion of all time. Um, but like, like my number two, I'm, you know what? My, my number two, I'm gonna definitely put the Space Marines. I'm, I'm sorry, it's not the Space Marines. I'm gonna put the, uh, the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, as my number two, and then uh, for number three, I'm gonna you know what? I'm gonna put the white scars, bro. I, I definitely like the white scars. I like, I like the design, stuff like that. I also like their uh, like their fighting style. I like that as well. Enjoyed. This is because while Jagatai inherited a legion that was already capable of fighting in a style to which he was accustomed, they were hollow, joyless men in desperate need of something to enrich themselves. Oh, Jagatai they didn't have no purpose. ordered each marine to take up a hobby. Calligraphy, painting, storytelling, needlepoint, anything to let the marines of the White Scars feel a little bit less like mindless killing machines. Wow. And it worked. The White Scars kept to their duties of scouting and hunting down the enemies of the Imperium without word of complaint. And when the time came for them to choose a side in the heresy, they stuck with the loyalists and hunted down their traitorous former allies. It's even a tradition that has persisted to this day, with the great hunts of the Khans wow. regularly finding and dispatching some of the deadliest enemies of the throne. So they didn't even have like a, so with the White Scars, they didn't even have, they technically didn't even have like a, like a mission or they didn't even have like a, um, or like a purpose, like I said before. And so they was like, you know what, bro, whatever he says, whatever goes, and we're just going to do, you know, what he says. They're not going to like, you know, break the hamster wheel and be like, oh, you know what? You know, why can't we do this? And like, you know, hop up the hamster wheel. They was like, you know what? 
we just gonna keep going and keep listening to the guy, whatever. That's crazy. Wow. Because obviously, like, you know, if I was in the White Scars, bro, I, I would have created a, a, a rebellion. You know, I would be like, yo, like, why are we, why are we listening to him? Like, why can't... Yo, we, you know we can do whatever we want, right? Like, I, like I, bro, I'll start stuff. And it, I'm going to be honest with you. If my white scars are losing, then I'll just, like, sneak off to the side and, like, try to escape and stuff like that and let the entire faction die. The Rout, the Vilka Fenrika, the Space Wolves, the 6th Legion Astartes has had several names across its history, and it's been quite a bloody one. One of these so-called Trefoil Legions, the 6th was made for a very specific purpose, to kill other Space Marines. Wait, the relatively what? small size of the legion was due in large part to the volatility of their gene seed, a precaution that the emperor baked in just in case his favorite executioners ever decided to turn on him. Not that oh. it made any difference to their effectiveness. During the unification wars and the early Great Crusade, the 6th legion was only unleashed when the emperor wanted to make a point, or if he needed a problem dealt with. Oh, so they were like the boys. Yo, so the emperor called up the boy. So these are, so th this is basically like Big Brother, basically. Like you know, like you know, they're gonna let the you know whatever, whatever happen. But whenever like, the emperor like really sees a problem, he's like, all right, hold up, let me call Big Brother real quick. Let me let me let me call let me call my oldest my oldest son real quick. Let me beep boop beep boop. Yeah yeah, come handle this. Okay, they're, they're like the Big Brothers of the okay. The warriors of the sixth soon gained a reputation for being some of the most savage fighters in the Imperium, a fact that worked well to keep potential traitors in line. Two very important things happened to the sixth legion during the Great Crusade. Their Primarch Lehman Russ was found, the Wolf King renaming his legion to the Space Wolves. And at some point, the wolves were called upon to fulfill their intended role as the Emperor's executioners killing the Primarchs of the 2nd and 11th Legions and mauling the surviving Marines so badly that none dare speak of the two lost Legions ever again. It was these acts that led to the other Primarchs rightfully fearing Russ and his Legion. It was said that what? out of every Primarch, only the Lion could have stood against the Wolf in combat, a thought that was tested in the bitter feuds the two Primarch had over the years. Nathan, boy, shut the up. problem with this reputation, of course, was that the Legionnaires of the 6th and their Primarch never really gained a close relationship with their peers. It's hard mm. to trust someone who you know would kill you as easily as they would drink with you, should the Emperor command it at least. This I mean, was taken to its extreme during the heresy when Horus successfully tricked the wolves into attacking the Thousand Sons with some false orders, oh. which kept them from helping their allies on Terra during the siege. To this day, the wolves are known for being some of the most incredibly deadly warriors in the galaxy and are not above fighting other Imperials who step out of line. Out wow, of all the Space Marine crazy. Legions, only the Seventh has claim to Terra as its official homeworld. The Imperial Fists established themselves early on as excellent defense troops, being proficient in the building of defenses and the nuances of a more aggressive defense style that lent itself very well to the abilities of a Space Marine force. This changed very little once they were reunited with their Primarch Rogel Dorn. Dorn was staunchly loyal and favored uncomplicated, straightforward approaches to every problem. Under his stewardship, the Imperial Fist Legion became as well known for their heavy assault tactics as they were for their ability to defend. Okay. This led them to be used quite often as the Emperor's blunt instrument, either breaking sieges that had held on for too long or defending desperate last stands that the Emperor could not afford to lose. In this oh, way, wow. the Imperial Fists gained so, a rivalry. It seemed like, I mean, so far, we're like 10 minutes in, by the way. It seems like the Emperor, like, he didn't just, like, create, like, the, you know, like, these, um, he didn't just, like, create, like, his sons, like, for just, like, whatever. Like, obviously, like, I'm guessing, well, not, I'm not even, I'm, I'm guessing. He just said, he created them for a specific reason. Like, you know, he kept, he created some, you know, uh, some of his sons for, like, you know, just in case this happened, just in case that happened. It's almost like the Emperor knew that, like, one of his sons or whatever uh, were going to, like, turn, like, uh, turn, like, his back, turn their back on him, if that makes sense. It was, it was almost like he knew that. But, to be honest, I did learn that whenever the Emperor was making his sons, that he did grab uh, some type of, like, he did, like, I think he used, like, some stuff from the warp to make his sons and stuff like that, which is crazy. So, I mean, if, if that's how he knew that one of the sons was like, one of the sons was like going to turn around and like try to like, you know, stab him in the back lead or something like that. So, I don't know. Come on, Be with the Let's Iron go. Warriors, the latter of which became very I think bitter so. that the know. Fists often received honors 
for the daring actions that they were assigned to, while they themselves were often relegated I like that to pink fighting on him. I like the that longer, less exciting that looks parts hard. of those same sieges. For his part, Dorne seemed completely uninterested in that sort of rivalry, thinking only of his duty to the Imperium. It was Dorne who constructed the imposing defenses of the Imperial Palace on Terra, and it was Dorne who accompanied the Emperor onto Horus's battle barge at the climax of the siege. His inability to stop the deaths of both his brother Sanguinius and the Emperor very nearly broke him, and while he very nearly came to blows with his brother Gilliman in the aftermath, he eventually decided it was best to keep what was left of the Imperium together. Oh, okay. Today, the Imperial Fists and their successor chapters fight as roving armies, crusading from one system to the next, never settling down. So, while the Fists claim Holy Terra as their home world, their real headquarters is their ancient mobile battle station called the Phalanx. The Eighth Legion, the Night Lords, are one Ooh, of the heard about most them. controversial of the Astartes forces, and that's saying something. The Emperor had his executioners to deal with traitors and his spies and his yeah. scouts, all roles useful for warfare on a galactic scale. But the problem is that, like any tyrant, the Emperor was worried about the masses of people rising up in revolt. No matter how many marines he made or how many campaigns he fought, the trillions and trillions of people in the New Imperium would always outnumber his armies and could force him to spend too much energy putting out the fires of revolution instead of conquering the enemies of humanity. Yeah, that makes sense. So the Emperor chose to make himself a terror force. The Legionnaires of the Eighth specialized in scare tactics, not like the Space Wolves who were so terrifying in combat that Ooh. other warriors would know that they couldn't win. The Night Lords would cut your power and creep in dark shadow. Who's there creeping through my window? Wow. So the so he basically made them as like a form of like intimidation. As like, wow. That's crazy. That is cr okay. I mean, well, to be honest with me, the, the, like the way he broke it down, that does make sense for the for the reason that they uh created them because like he said before, if it is like a revolution or whatever and people like, you know, are revolting or whatever, um and like they do outmatch, not outmatch, but they do outnumber you know, the emperor in like, you know, his armies or whatever. I mean, if I'm being honest with you, it does make sense to make uh, like an entire separate just faction or legion specifically just to keep everybody in line. That that makes sense. It's kind of like, um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, you might disagree with this example. It's kind of like, um, I don't know. It's kind of like a, I don't know if you guys ever been on like a farm before, but you guys ever had like a farm dog, like the dog that like keeps all the sheep in like a circle and kind of like rounds them up so like that the sheep can like go inside of like 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 the fence i think i think it's kind of like that i mean if that example is bad then it's bad but if it's good it's good and i'm genius they would take over the vox feeds and blare the screams of the dying to the rest of the populace they would flay people and leave them to be found in the town square they wow. fought dirty ugly they Ooh. made the idea of fighting the imperium terrifying and it wasn't long before the other Primarchs took a stand. And here is probably the biggest instance of cowardice by the Emperor himself. It's very clear that the Emperor created the Night Lords to be this way and encouraged them, ordered them to act like this. Just like with Angron of the World Eaters, the Emperor knew that the Primarch of the Eighth, Conrad Kurz, was racked with mental instability brought on by conditions that might have been curable, but chose to do nothing and disavow the Night Lords when it became known that they committed acts of terror, even and especially upon I mean, the citizens of the Imperium. I mean, but like, at the end of the day, can you blame them though? Because if that's your role, if that's your role is to keep everybody like, you know, settled or whatever i mean i would rather i mean and it is a little messed up because if the emperor knew that the dude had like a bunch of like you know mental illness and stuff like that that he that he was just unhinged or whatever but at the same time he did his job i mean because now you're at that moment to where like you're in you're, you're kind of in a pickle you're like okay do i help him out with the like mental you know whatever and like you know mellow him out and then like you know he's like dang like what am i doing he starts to like, regret it or do i just let him keep doing what he's doing I mean, obviously, he's doing like a really good job in keeping everybody, you know, uh, you know, he shun, he shun, he basically shunned down all the plans, basically. So, like, what would you guys do if you were the emperor? Would you like, you know, help the guy out mentally, whatever, or like, like if you if you already knew that, or would you, you know, just let him be, let him keep doing his job, whatever, you know, let him collect his check on Friday and stuff like that. So, what would you guys do? I'm gonna be honest with you. If it was me, man, I'm letting him collect his check on Friday, bro. Keep doing, bro. <laughs> 
Keep doing you, bro. And eight, hey, and to all the other Primarchs, shut up. I'm, bro, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I'm pulling all the Primarchs into a meeting, bro. I'm literally, bro, yo, don't get in his way. He's doing his job. Let him collect his check on Friday, bro. What are you guys doing? Needless to say that the Night Lords decided to work with Horus and the other traders when the time came. Even oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. He, he didn't trade. <laughs> he didn't trade it places. Never mind. <laughs> He didn't trade it. Yep. Okay. He was like, you know what? I'm just going to work with Horus. Okay. Even though they never accepted worship of the Chaos Gods, their only goal post heresy has seemingly been to tear down the rotting edifice okay. of the Imperium that betrayed them. Okay. Originally well. designed as one of a handful of shock troop armies, the Legion that would become the Blood Angels were often deployed either as the very tip of the Emperor's spear or wherever a stubborn enemy needed to be wiped out wholesale. It was a job the wow. Ninth Legion excelled at, often replenishing lost marines with new stock taken from their enemies, and in this way, the Legion gained a reputation for returning from dangerous campaigns with the same number of marines it had departed with. But oh. that wasn't the only rumor. All marines are capable of eating flesh to gain information or emergency sustenance, but the Ninth Legion became known for ritualistically eating their slain foes after battle, indulging in a red thirst for blood. Hell no. Get the... No. No. Uh-uh. No. No. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You telling me they got a bro? They got a full. They got a full bite of booty. You telling me that's they just they just out here just just biting everything? Really? Look at him. He got the. Oh my goodness! This ain't even ketchup. Oh my goodness gracious! This ain't hot sauce or ketchup, and his teeth is still white. He got the blood on his. Oh my goodness gracious! So you got a bite? So wait, wait. So him and his peoples were <laughs> they bit the dead bodies <laughs> just for information? Are you sick? Oh my, that's nasty. Hey, see, the salamanders, they could never. I don't care what you guys say. Oh, well, you're crazy. You're crazy in the shed. You're, 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 you're crazy. This reputation pushed them further from the rest of the Imperium as they were shunned and slowly began to devolve into feral murderers. Oh, no. Nah. And then Sanguinius was found. The angelic Primarch had grown up on the world of Baal. And when he was given his legion, the incredibly psychic Primarch instantly felt a connection to his gene sons. Instead of demanding they swear an oath to him, Sanguinius swore an oath to them. They would either rise together or fall together. Under his leadership, the Blood Angels went from pariahs to one of the most decorated assault legions in the Imperium. It's no surprise then that the Marines of the Blood Angels Legion had the strongest bond with their Primarch, only strengthened by his psychic abilities. When Horus slew Sanguinius aboard his ship at the climax of the Siege of Terra, the entire legion broke, succumbing to an illness which would become known as the Black Rage. As the rage takes hold, afflicted marines begin to believe they are Sanguinius, facing oh. down their treacherous brother is Horus, it, is this what he crashed and out? dying. No one knows how or when it will affect a Blood Angels marine, but the effects are almost always irreversible, with notable exceptions. Today, the Blood Angels are one of the strongest chapters of the Adeptus Astartes, They're still alive? but the rage still afflicts them, forcing Blood Angels' leadership to place their raving comrades into doomed squads called the Death Company, so that they might seek their end in battle. What? The 10th Legion had always been as relentless as their Primarch, even before Ferris Manus was found. Called the Stormwalkers during the Unification Wars, the 10th Legion had a very simple, straightforward approach to warfare, not unlike the warriors of the Death Guard. In fact, by the beginning of the Great Crusade, it was apparent that the Stormwalkers had gained an affinity for using heavy vehicles and mobile artillery pieces to simply advance towards an enemy until it wasn't a problem anymore. Okay. This hardly changed when Ferris Manus was given the Legion, and it was named the Iron Hands in honor of the Primarch's literal metal hands. What that, Manus really name. brought to his Legion was a need to purge weakness. The warriors of the 10th became known for using their advanced machinery to turn aside enormous enemy armies, breaking overwhelming forces with their technology. 
The marines of this legion would also make extensive use of bionic replacements for limbs, as the sort of fighting they were used to often led to mangled soldiers. Oh. This led to the legion having a much stronger working relationship with the tech priests of Mars compared to other legions. So this was like the so this was like the like the tech, like like the technology like kind of advanced like type of legion. Okay, I mean, bro, some of their builds like oh, like this, bro. This looks like at the back of like. This looks like at like the back of somebody's desk, of like a PC player's desk. Like all, all I see is cords and extension cords and HDMI cords and stuff like that. But okay. this, this affinity for machines, coupled with their belief that the flesh is weak, led to some dire consequences after the heresy began. Fulgrim and Ferris Manus had been some of the closest friends out of all the Primarchs, oh, but nice. when Fulgrim tried to get Manus to join the traitors, the Stoic Iron Hands Primarch tried to kill him. When they finally met again on the battlefield, neither man could kill the other until Fulgrim in his grief gave himself to the demon in his sword and Manus was decapitated. The Iron Hands shattered with different factions following various captains on missions what? of vengeance. This almost destroyed what was left of the Legion, with factions blaming the traitors for their cowardice, their allies for their lack of strength, and even blaming Manus and the bro, Iron they gotta Hands be a Warhammer movie, for indulging bro. in their emotions. Seeking to purge this weakness, the remaining Iron Hands became cold, calculating fighters who want nothing more than to purge the weakness of humanity. Wow. There has been some pushback against the Doctrine recently, but the Iron Hands remain ruthlessly emotionless as a whole. Sorry, your legion is in another castle. What's going on? There can't be two missing legions, can there? The 12th legion was- Wait, 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 wait. There wasn't there like a- Yo, slap me in the face and call me Bob. But I'm pretty sure there was a... Wasn't there like a missing legion at the beginning of the video? Yo, why is... uh Bro, where are those legions at? I'm pretty... Wait, was it the was it the third legion that was missing? Or the fourth? There, there was some... Where are these... Where are these legions going? Oh, bro, are they like... Bro, did they get drunk last night? Like, bro, that, why didn't they show up in the video? Did they like have too much beer last night? Like, what's, what's going on? Like... Bro, attendance, attendance, like, bro, raise your hand. Where are you? You're not in school today? Like, what's going on? Like, where'd they go? Born as the Warhounds and immediately established themselves as an effective assault force. Their discipline in training and combat deployments was similar to legions like the Luna Wolves or the early Blood Angels, but their aggression and ferocity once engaged in combat was much closer to the disposition of the Space Wolves. The Emperor even kept the Warhounds in reserve for much of the Unification War in case he needed to keep other legions in line, again, not unlike the Space Wolves. However, early in the Great Crusade, the prison colony on the asteroid Cerberus rose up in revolt led by a small group of Thunder Warriors who had somehow survived the purges. Having no other legion nearby, the Emperor sent in the Twelfth, and the Warhounds went to work. Okay. The invasion began at 0300 hours, and by 0808, the all-clear was given by the Warhound's commander. After being asked what the state of the prisoners was, the commander replied that he had not been ordered to take any. And from then on, the Legion was used as the premier assault group of the Imperium and was embedded in the 13th Expeditionary Fleet, working alongside elements of the Imperial Army. And it was under these conditions that the 12th Legion was reunited with their Primarch Angron who was angry about being ripped away from his gladiator family and decided to kill a bunch of his marines about it. Get this damn psychopath out of here. Are you si Listen, I understand. I mean, you know, he, 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 his family, whatever. You killing your own marines? Why couldn't you like you, bro? Why, bro, there's trees. You can hit trees. Bro, you can... You killing... You know they got families too, right? You, you see, and this is bro. The salamanders could never, bro. We're so wholesome, but at the same time, bro, we're so strong and tough, and just all we do is win, 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 win. Like that's all we do. Eventually, they calm down, but the rest of the history of this legion is centered around them trying and failing to gain approval of their angry gene father. That's crazy. They changed their name to the World Eaters. They began to act more recklessly in their assault actions. They started getting implants similar to Angron's that drove them insane with rage, and none of it worked. 
When their primarch sided with Horus because of his unfair and frankly cruel treatment at the hands of the Emperor, the World Eaters obediently followed him right into damnation. The mighty 13th Legion Astartes uh -oh, began the Indianapolis as the Warp, Colts. a legion whose gene Marines. seed was noted for its high adaptability, leading to the legion becoming the home of refugees instead of taking its recruits from a specific cultural area of Old Terra. This would be a reoccurring pattern, as they would begin by taking in recruits from the defeated enemies of the Emperor on Earth, and wow. eventually take in the loyal Marines. Isn't that what happened to um the Titus, right? Titus, he was a uh in Space Marine 2, he was a uh Death Watcher. He was a Death Watcher because he was in all black, remember? And so, and then the Space Marines came through and saved them. And then he was like, well, you know, since y'all saving, whatever, he read the Pledge of Allegiance. And then, you know, he got signed, what, a $200 million contract. And he started playing for the, Indian, for the Indianapolis Colts. My bad. Sorry for the Ultramarines. Of censured or lost legions See, I know the my heresy. heresy. I know well, it. suited to the work of a backbone force, the 13th Legion gradually became known as a competent campaigning legion, often taking on whole war zones without support from other legions. This worked well with the leadership style of their Primarch, Rabute Gilliman, who was adept at not only the business of persecuting wars, but administrating afterwards. The Legion's name was changed to the Ultramarines and so began one of the most successful careers of any Legion during the Great Crusade. Yeah. Maybe it was Gilliman's excellent organizational mind or the ease at which his Legion took to things like diplomacy and logistics, but Either way, the Ultramarines conquered more worlds than any legion except the Luna Wolves, and their numbers swelled to easily eclipse any of the other Astartes armies. Wow. There are rumors that this sudden swell of Ultramarine recruits is due to, um, okay, I know I just had the notes for this section, and now they're not here. Okay, we'll move on for now, but wow. if I find that passage, I'll circle back. Being the largest legion by far, Horus knew he had to keep the Ultramarines away from Terra or his siege would be stopped easily. So he threw large elements of the Word Bearers, World Eaters, Alpha Legion, and even the Night Lords at their home system of Makraj Dang. in order to keep them fighting there instead of in Seoul. And the numbers of the Ultramarines is still a huge factor in their operations today, Dang. with the chapter having more splinter armies than any other original legion. The Ultramarines literally wrote the book on the Astartes, and love them or hate them, they are one of the most effective forces in the galaxy. Dang, they're like, they're the, like the, 90, the 97 the Bulls, the 96 Legion, Bulls. Or the Dusk Raiders, as they were called at the beginning, were tough even by Astartes standards. Oddly, they began as an ambush force, striking at Dusk, as their name implies, and making extensive use of heavier armor types so that they could simply walk into enemy fire for maximum intimidation. The Dusk Raiders fought like this for over eight decades into the Great Crusade before Mortarion, their Primarch, was found. Himself a stoic, tough fighter, Mortarion recognized his new legion as agents of the inevitable and renamed them the Death Guard. Their way of fighting it's subtly nice switched around this time to attrition-style combat, their already tough physiques lending themselves extra protection in battlefields with harsh environmental conditions. In some places that were poisonous or devoid of atmosphere, the warriors of the 14th were sent to show the enemies of humanity that the Emperor would not be turned aside by anything. This led the Legion to fight mostly as foot sloggers, rarely using transport. Oh, so these guys are like the, so like, these guys are like the, um, you guys know like a, like a multi-tool? Like, or like, it's like one of those tools that have like a hammer, a screwdriver, a wrench and stuff like that. These guys were basically like that. They, they were just like ready for anything. They was like really prepared. They're kind of like the, they kind of like the, are, are they like, like like the Batman of like everything? They were just like really prepared for everything. Okay. Or bikes or jump packs like other legions did. And instead simply advancing on foot in both power arms. Or, or you know what? I'm sorry to pause it again. Or you could say that the Ultramarines are kind of like the multi-tool because bro, the Ultramarines, bro, they're kind of, bro, they're cracked, bro. I, like, bro, I haven't heard they, listen. Their resume is bro picture perfect. I'm gonna be honest with you. So it's either this team right here, um, what like the Death Guard or whatever, or is it either like the Ultramarines or like the uh they're like they're like the multi tool of like all the um legions and factions and stuff like that. And Terminator armor. 
Mortarion only really became close with Horus, and so even before the heresy began, it was very likely that he would have fought for his brother against the Emperor, but it should be noted that not all his legionnaires felt the same, and if it was not for Nathaniel Garo and the flight of the Eisenstein, the loyal forces of the Imperium would not have known about Horus's treachery until it was too late to stop him. And while Mortarion originally had no hey, intentions is a bad of lowering boy, himself to worshipping the powers of chaos, the Great Unclean One had other plans, and marooned Martarion's fleet in a pocket- Look at this damn freakazoid. Look at him. Put your tongue back in your mouth. Look at this freakazoid, bro. Hey, this is why, bro, hygiene is, is, is key. Tell him to cut it, bro. Bite your fingernails with those big, sharp teeth of yours. Bro, make sure you brush your teeth. And I'm not one to, like, you know, roast anybody, because, oh, listen, I'm not Brad Pitt or nothing. But, bro, look at, look at this. Look at this, this no good- just evil, just evil menace, bro. And I'm not even gonna make, you know, make fun of his size, you know, because, you know, bro, it, 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 like, I can't find, you know, much of a big word, you know, to come up with his size. But to be honest with you, bro, this man, bro, he conniving. He, bro, he a Batman villain, Of bro. the war. The destroyer plague tore through his marines, maiming and torturing them until Mortarion pledged himself to Nurgle just to stop the pain. When the Death Guard finally arrived at Terra, the bloated forms of the new Death Guard were terrifying and nearly unkillable. Mortarion himself ascended to demonhood and plagues the Imperium to this day. The Thousand Sons are probably one of the most tragic stories in the Imperium. They were originally formed from recruits born inside the Emperor's lands on Terra, and so many hadn't suffered war much before the Unification Wars. They were the sons of nobility already loyal to the Emperor, and many had been educated in some manner before volunteering. They were formed by the Emperor himself as the Unification Wars were coming to a close, and exactly 1,000 carefully picked student aspirants were the foundation of the 15th Legion. Aside from their beginnings, the Astartes of the Thousand Sons weren't particularly notable how they fought or were organized, until they started developing psychic powers. And while the curious marines of the 15th were at first happy about this development, it very quickly spiraled out of control. Uh oh. At this point in history, not many people in the Imperium knew about the warp and the chaotic powers within, and that was by design. Starving the Chaos Gods of attention was an effective way of robbing their power. The warriors what? of the Thousand Sons did not know this and began to horrifically mutate. As they slowly brought the outbreaks under control, other Primarchs like Mortarion and Rogaldorn became aware of the Psykers in the 15th Legion and pushed to have them censured. No mutant should be allowed in the Emperor's forces. But the 15th Legion couldn't help but learn more, and so continued in secret, especially after being reunited with their Primarch Magnus, whose psychic might was second only to the Emperor's. He stabilized the mutations and reorganized the Legion into chapters. What is he doing on the streets? What is he doing on the streets? What do you mean second to the Emperor? What that mean? And y'all allowed him on the streets? Oh no, nah, that don't even sound good. Oh no. So term which would eventually be used. Bro, that's like prime Bill Belichick. Like, like, bro, like that's like, bro, that's like having Bill Belichick on your team, bro. That's like prime Bill Belichick too. Yo. For every Astartes force. Upsettingly, it was Magnus's attempt to warn the Emperor about Horus that got his legion almost destroyed by the Space Wolves, who were forced to deal with the Thousand Sons for breaking the rules about using psychic powers, Dang. even if it was to warn the Emperor. Now on the run from the Imperium, the 15th Legion had no choice but to hide in the warp, which brought the mutations back. Desperate chapter leaders attempted a complicated spell, the rubric of Ahriman, which stopped the mutations at the cost of turning their bodies to dust. Most Thousand Marines are now barely sentient and their forces travel the galaxy on mysterious missions for their god Zinch, and to find a cure. Wait, then, um, wait. The, the Thousand Sons, they were in uh, Warhammer Space Marine too. The, uh, the, what you call it, the Space Marines, they fought them. Yeah, I remember that. And, um, aren't they, aren't they, like, their type is, like, magic, right? They're, 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 like, they're, it's magic type, right? I think so. Mirroring the rise and fall of their Primarch, Horus Lupercal, okay, the 16th Legion the started out as one of the Emperor's most trusted forces. The Terran recruits were formed from wandering tribes known for pragmatism and independence, making the bulk of the original 16th Legion into fierce and effective shock troops. It was this quality which led the Emperor to choose them from the pacification of Luna, 
a battle which captured the genetic laboratories that the Emperor needed to complete his Space Marine program. As a reward, the 16th Legion was named the Luna Wolves, and given much of the first batches of Gene Seed, making them one of the strongest legions even before the Great Crusade started. And that hardly changed when Horus was found on the very nearby world of Chthonia. Horus was actually the very first Primarch to be discovered, and for 30 years was the only Primarch, leading him to gaining not only a very strong bond with his legion, but also the Emperor, and to some extent the whole Imperium. He was wow. the Emperor's favorite son. We spoke yeah. earlier about how being the first legion gave the Dark Angels a bit of an ego. Imagine being the only legion with a Primarch for three decades, and that Primarch being the obvious favorite among his brothers. Needless to say, the Luna Wolves were a bit puffed up. During the Great Crusade, the 16th Legion pushed themselves to conquer more worlds, pursue more enemies, fight more glorious wars, and- The ego. The ego. They, th they thought they was it. They, they thought that they was- They thought that they was the uh, 2007 New England Patriots. They thought that they were just the it factor. We all know, man. Ego, man, that is, that is the- That is the- And I'm talking about real life, too. I'm not even talking about, like, just Warhammer, whatever. Listen up. The ego is the man's worst enemy, man. Oh man, bro. There are men, bro, who 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 will just be driven by ego, bro, that will ruin their life. Try listen, whatever you do as a man, try not to, you know, have a I mean, cause it, it, at the end of the day, right, you can use your ego for like, you know, to you know, like these guys, you know, they're trying to push and like, you know, get extra royals, you know, and, and get more stuff and get more and get more. There's nothing wrong with like trying to get more. But at the end of the day, you know, everybody loses once in a while, you know, and I'm not trying to, you know, act like whatever. But I'm just I'm just stating the facts. Even the best, of the best of the best lose. So when you're so used to being great for so long and now in your head, you're like, oh, well, I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best, whatever. And, you know, you know, and then one day you get, you know, hit in the mouth like Mike Tyson. Um then, I mean, you know, it is what it is, so. ...win more accolades than their fellow legions. Only the Ultramarines even came close. Then came Ulanor. The Ulanor Crusade was a defining moment for the Imperium as a whole, but the Luna Wolves more than most. The largest orc empire was destroyed as the Emperor himself took to the field for the final time during the Great Crusade, leaving for a mysterious project under the Terran surface and proclaiming Horus the War Master, Supreme Commander oh, of dang. Imperial Forces, second only to the Emperor himself. When he left, the Emperor suggested that Horus rename his legion to reflect his new position, and though he originally refused, he began to think the other Primarchs still saw him just as a peer, and so he relented, and the 16th Legion became the Sons of Horus. What happened soon after is a story for another video, oh, but wow. Horus was infected by the powers of chaos thanks in part to the scheming of his brother Lorgar of the Word Bearers, and the slow slide into heresy began. After the climactic battle with the Emperor during the Siege of Terra, what was left of the Sons of Horus- Didn't Horus get like, didn't he get like permanently wiped out or something like that? ...rallied around their former first captain Abaddon and renamed themselves the Black Legion. The story of the 17th Legion is a strange one, but that's fitting considering they're the most direct cause of the Horus heresy. Originally wow. named the Imperial Heralds, the 17th Legion was made up of the sons of defeated enemies on Old Terra and were raised to understand the crimes of their parents, a connection that no other Space Marine was allowed to keep during their transition. This had the effect of making the Marines of the 17th much more zealous in their pursuit of their orders and the Imperial Truth, the working doctrine of the Imperium which favored logic and reason above all else. To go along with this, the 17th Legion were the official emissaries of the Emperor, delivering his ultimatums to potential enemies by a single marine in black armor, a skull helmet, and a winged mace. That's right, the 17th Legion invented space marine chaplains. Things took a turn, however, when their Primarch was discovered. What? Lorgar Aurelian was raised to be a devout man and believed very strongly that religion was a fundamental part of being human. Which would be a nice sentiment if his two most devoted advisors hadn't been worshippers of chaos before they had been made into Astartes. Wowzers. Once reunited with his legion, Lorgar renamed them the Word Bearers and began twisting the Imperial Truth into a true religion with the Emperor at its center. Wherever they went, they built shrines to the Master of Humanity until finally, the Emperor had enough. 
he was going to sick the space wolves on them, removing them from history like the second and eleventh. <laughs> bro, that man. Bro, the Emperor, bro, if he don't like something, bro, he's sending those space wolves to you immediately, bro. Bro, that's like, bro, that's like, like, call something, like, that's like, listen, if, it, you know, listen, if you're from, like, the hood or whatever, you know what, listen, you about to know what I'm talking about. Bro, that's like calling a hit on somebody, bro. Yeah, bro, they right there. You know, hey, hey, they really made me mad. They right there, bro, I got you out there. Like, bro, that's like calling a hit on somebody, bro. Obviously, I never did that before, but, like, bro. If this man, bro, the emperor don't like what you're doing, bro, the space wolves are on, bro, they're on route to your house. They are coming, bro, in the black trucks. Legions, but the other Primarchs convinced him to show leniency, and so the Ultramarines were ordered to level the word bearer's capital city, and they were made to kneel in the ash and repledge themselves to the Imperial Truth. And that was all that was needed. Lorgar's advisors told him that there were other gods more worthy of his worship, and so the first Primarch slid into Chaos worship and began planning to corrupt his greatest uh -oh. brother, Horus. Yeah. Today, the word bearers continue this sort of work, seeding cults in Imperial territory and furthering the worship of the ruinous powers. The second of the most carefully yeah! and secretly legions, the 18th Legion, had a very specific purpose like the Space Wolves and the yeah! Alpha Legion. These Marines and the special changes to their gene seed were kept secret even from the other legions for quite some time. For the 18th Legion, this purpose was to be the heroes of humanity. And that's what they are. I don't care what you say, bro. Go back to your other faction, because that's what they are. This is the, bro, bro. First of all, everybody should be standing up right now. Bro, as a matter of fact, bro, if you're watching this on your TV or, or phone or whatever, you, bro, you can watch this on a potato, bro. Stand up right now, bro, and bow down, bro, to the Salamanders. I don't have to since I'm actually on the squad. Bro, bow down to the Salamanders right now, bro, because they're legit the best team of all time. They're the greatest team of all time, bro. Go argue with your mom. Go argue with your dad. Go argue bro, with, with your annoying sister, bro. This is the number one faction, legion, whatever you want to call it, bro. The number one. No, numero uno, bro. How you say how you say number one in, in French? Uh, uh, da toi can't. Oh, okay, so it's uh, 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 uh number uh, bro. This, bro, this is this is literally the number one legion of all time, bro. Again, go argue with your mother. Kept in reserve for most of the unification wars, the 18th was suddenly unleashed against one of the emperor's most dangerous enemies. Twenty-six thousand Astartes went in, and only. 1,000 walked out again, but the enemy was defeated and no other lives had been lost. Their Primarch Vulcan saved the day in much the same manner Dude, look, look at the Wayne Rock Johnson. during a desperate fight against a large orc raiding fleet. Vulcan, who had been found but not yet reunited with his legion, suddenly arrived with 3,000 new recruits and master forged equipment for his battered legion who had been holding the line without him. Too late to save the former commanders of the 18th, Vulcan knelt to the men he had been too late to save, and the Legion was his, renamed then to the Salamanders. This is why the 18th Legion was always the smallest. They'd swoop into these desperate situations and hold the line until their charges were safely away, or until they'd won, but always at the cost of many Astartes' lives. As for the heresy itself, the Salamanders did their best to be effective with their small numbers. They did their job. Their job was to come through. Listen, if your legion was going out sad, if your legion was going out bad and you couldn't do nothing about it, the Salamanders, first of all, they did this all for free. They did this for free. No money, no nothing. See, their job was to come through and save nobody. Bro, they don't like nobody getting jumped. Bro, it's like you getting jumped by like five guys and you see me coming through. I'm the Salamanders, by the way. That's like you see me coming through and I'm hitting everybody with all types of haymakers, knees, uh, elbows, you know, uh, uh, the butter sock from, from, from Sam and Cat. Bro, I'm going crazy. So at the end of the day, bro, bro, the Salamanders are legit, bro. Literally the number one, bro. D bro, they do their job perfectly, bro, with execution. Even though, you know, some people die, whatever, you know, rest in peace to, you know, to all the past Salamen out there. But at the end of the day, bro, no other faction comes close. Again, go argue with your mother or go argue with your father. I don't care, bro. But were subject to several terrible defeats at the hands of the traitor legions. Vulcan himself was even captured briefly by the Night Lord, but after several executions, the Night Haunter admitted that he didn't know how to kill the apparently immortal Salamander's Primarch. The journeys of Vulcan you are too you complex to him. voice here, but just know that he's still out there somewhere waiting for his chance to return to his heroic gene sons. You, Until then, they'll continue being the Imperium's shield.
In the very beginning, the yes, 9th sir. Legion was a guerrilla force, striking from the shadows at targets that would cause the most disruption for an enemy. They operated quite similarly to the Night Lords in this regard, the intent being to sow terror wherever they went and ensure that the prospect of fighting the Imperium was too frightening to contemplate. Earlier, however, they were often tasked with supporting the larger Luna Wolves Legion in their campaigns, so they never really gained the disgust of their peers in the same way that the Night Lords did. Regardless, after almost a century of the Great Crusade, the 19th Primarch was found. Corvus Corax had been living on a world called Deliverance, and had spent much of that time leading a rebellion against the cruel rulers of that planet. When he saw how his legion made war, he was disgusted and purged the old leadership. He believed there were better ways to make an enemy fall than to terrorize innocent people. Instead, oh. he trained his legion to become expert trackers and assassins, using their already prodigious skills in stealth operations to make them even more effective against dismantling power structures. Their success led to the newly renamed Raven Guard being requested for many campaigns, including- Are these the guys that, um, that will like, uh, are these like the assassins that will like chill out and just like, and like wait for like the person that they want to kill like or assassinate for like weeks don't they just like wait on top of like a roof or whatever and eat like uh mcdonald's and burger king and stuff like that until like the person they uh comes through and like they kill him i think they um like sometimes they wait like weeks or months or whatever are, are these the same guys or what the conflict at east van five Already one of the smallest legions, the Raven Guard were set upon by an ambush as the traitor legions revealed themselves by turning their guns on their former allies. What? Outnumbered and fighting a straight out battle, not something the Raven Guard were well suited for, mm. they were almost completely wiped out. The problems didn't stop there either, with the Raven Guard gene seed beginning to deteriorate faster than normal, produce horrible mutations, and forcing Ooh. recruitment to a crawl. This is a problem that persisted for most of the Legion's existence until the recent introduction of the Primaris Marines, which finally seems to have solved the problem. The Emperor had his wolfish executioners and his draconic hero. I was about to say, yo, um, yo, to, to the ra to the Ravens, to the Raven people. Bro, join us, bro. Bro, bro, we're here. We're, we're, we're kind of like in a way, like, you know, you guys still kill people and stuff like that. Um, but like, you know, there's not really many of you guys. Hey, to the hey, to the Raven people out there, bro. Uh you can come join us, bro. You know, hey, as a matter of fact, you know, let's have a coffee or something. We could definitely work something out. Um, I could definitely sign you guys for what? Mm, 10 million a piece, 10 million for everybody, uh, every single person. I'll throw in like some M&M's and, some, some, and, and like some Cheetos or like some Lay's chips or something like that. Uh, we could definitely make a deal. Hit my loin. The last thing he needed was a legion of serpentine spies. Kept intentionally at low membership like the other two specialty legions, Extremely little is known about the Alpha Legion, originally known as the Ghost Legion. This seems to have been intentional as well, with false records being implanted at the same time as others are simply erased. This is because the special purpose of the Alpha Legion was to run subterfuge operations. Imperial records only confirm their existence with vague reports of small Alpha units operating far ahead of the main battle lines, gathering intel, assassinating key targets, and setting up informant networks among the Emperor's enemies, sometimes years before they even saw an Imperial fleet. From what we know, the standard operating procedure of the Alpha Legion goes like this. A small handful of Alpha Legion operatives, Astartes and mortal humans, arrive at the target location and begin setting up a network. This network begins to destabilize the enemy organizational structure with things like crime rings, political corruption, targeted oh. assassinations, <laughs> and the spreading of false information and propaganda. Once the enemy has been suitably thrown into disarray, the main Alpha Legion forces arrive and attack from as many angles as possible, spreading more chaos and finishing the job in a lightning strike. Dang. The nature of the Alpha Legion is such that we can never truly be sure of anything about them, but we do know that their Primarch is a man named Alpharius, a name that every like Lex Luthor. Legionnaire gives to anyone outside the Legion when asked for identification. They also make attempts to look like their Primarch, who is by all accounts one of the smallest Primarchs. Oh, also he's got a twin brother. The biggest secret of the 20th Legion is that their Primarch is actually twins. Alpharius and Omegon. The two have even pretended to be one another. Oh no, you can't trust them. Mm -mm. 
These this alpha group. Oh yeah, we can't trust them. See the bro. See they're the type to like you know once the type to have a have a test one day in class and then you know they switch swap. The twin comes in. The smarter twin comes in. And he just aces it. Oh yeah. I mean it's smart. It's smart. We're gonna finish this up. It's smart, but let's finish this up real quick. To such an extent that while Alpharius is confirmed to have been killed sometime after the heresy, we're still not certain of which one died or even if he actually did die. This oh, cloud of no. confusion goes so far as to make it completely oh, uncertain whether the Alpha Legion actually sided with we can't trust or them. not during the heresy. No. They certainly fought with him against the Loyalists and do the work of the Chaos to this day, but there are whispers that they are working from within to destabilize the efforts of the ruinous powers. Overall, the Space Marine Legions wow. are some of 40k's most discussed areas of lore. They have evolved from simple two-dimensional flavors of combat styles to full-blown characters in an epic space opera. Thank you so much for watching our very first long-form oh, video. We hope you'll stick with us as we bring you more lore. Uh, shout out to you, bro. Um, listen, man, th this this was definitely... I, I like this video a lot, man. Um, you know, listen, my Salamander is obviously, like, you know, the number one uh, faction slash Legion of all time. Um, those last guys, the, the, uh, the alpha or whatever, bro, man, bro, you can't trust those guys, man. We, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. We're not helping those guys out. As, as a matter of fact, if the Salamanders do be like, yo, you know, uh, the Alpha Legion, they, they just called us up. Uh, you know, should we go help them? No. <laughs> nah. Mm -mm. Nah, just let them. Nah. <laughs> nah. Nah. Comment down below, man. What do y'all think about this video, man? Make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching all uh, of my videos. Even when I even don't post uh, some Warhammer videos and I'm posting some other videos, you guys still check them out. That means that you guys are absolutely real ones. So other than that, man, again, comment down below. Like the video. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next mount. And peace out.